what developments we have made so far. So a PTP 700 comes from a legacy product PTP uh, or 600. So the PTP 600 is our high capacity native band, which is the 4.4 to 4.6 band solution, uh, which works on line of sight solution as well. Uh, our throughput capacity for that was about 300 uh, Mbps. So the PTP 600 comes in two flavors, uh, the integrated version and connectorized version. So our PTP 600 has been proven technology uh, used across multiple fields and uh, domains. Uh, uh, these are some of the examples where we have already used and deployed them. Uh, starting from the US Navy test range to NOVA and uh, CECOM. So these are our four main attributes of our PTP 600, which is the MTBF, which is mini mean time between failures, which is around 377. So that's basically calculated by taking the number of units sold. Uh, and then multiplying it by the number of hours it is deployed and then dividing or subtracting how many uh, products were returned. So even though the number seems high, it basically means it's a really reliable product. Uh, the temperature operations for the PTP 600 is between minus 40 to plus 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The maximum wind capacity is around 202 uh, miles per hour and it has a IP66 uh, ATX has lost uh, IP66 encasing and it also supports ATX and Haslock. And uh, the PTP 600 has been in field for more than 5 billion field hours. Uh, so I want to walk you through a few uh, use cases and scenarios that we have deployed. So the first one being uh, the 105 kilometer link in the Republic of Congo. So this was deployed for a mining project uh, with more with respect to uh, geology and logistics. Uh, so the main reason for communication here is was uh, communicating with the company headquarters, exploring different uh, mine sites along the road, um, uh, providing uh, highway com uh, road communication while people were driving along the way, uh, and for supporting the Motorola two-way uh, radio backhaul so people can communicate. As well, we deployed uh, 10 links over a, a square footage area of 40,000 kilometers, or uh, which covers around 500 kilometers of road which also covers 100 kilometers of road. So this is our uh, second use case of uh, deploying uh, PTP products over water. So this is a 30 kilometer range over water. We used it in 2.0 link configuration. So this is with a company called Reliance Industries in India. So we basically we deployed one, uh, we deployed one end of the uh, PTP, PTP products on the ships and other end was on the uh, on on land uh, and this was over 30 kilometers or uh, even though it was this far away uh, we did not lose uh, we did not lose the uh, link and we we also maintained uh, high, high through, relatively high throughput uh, given then even though our ship was moving our maximum throughput uh, was around 300 mbps our uh, third uh, use case is uh, here in the US. So this was a 90 kilometer link that was deployed in North Atlantic, uh, in the Atlantic Ocean in North Carolina state. So this actually covered both land as well as sea. So this was a 56 mile link uh, in which 34 mile links was over the Atlantic Ocean and the remaining was over land. So this link was mainly used to deliver video streaming and access to a retired Coast Guard lighthouse, uh, which is now being restored as like a tourism application tourism and ecology application. So this application highlights the unparalleled capability of delivering broadband over long stretches of water. Uh, and this link was established with a four foot dish at each end with the line mounted on a height of around one, 180 feet tower. Uh, this is our last uh, use case of uh, deploying it in uh, in Wellington. Uh, so this was a link that we deployed for over 109 miles. So this is a really long distance range. Uh, and uh, we, we were able, successfully able to deploy uh, a link uh, at, at that distance. Uh, yeah, so as you can see in the snapshot below of our link planner, uh, I'll get to that in the next couple of slides. It, it gives you the range of how far the uh, product, uh, how far the links are and what is the throughput for that. In this case, you can see it's around 173, 176.3 kilometers. 
So our PTP 700 is the next generation for our PTP 45000. Uh, uh, so the PTP 700 operates in the range of 4.4 to 5.9 uh, gigahertz. So it actually has a wide band uh, uh, coverage as well as high capacity and it is uh, non line of sight with PTP and PMP solutions available. Uh, it also comes in two flavors, uh, the connectorized and connectability, and the maximum throughput capacity is uh, 450 Mbps. So basically, if we combine our 12 PTP 600s, which would come, which would fall under the 45 gigahertz range, the 48, the 49, the 54, the 58, 59, combining all of these 12 into one product we get the PTP 45700 connect integrated which operates from all the way from 4.4 gigahertz to 4.9 gigahertz uh, this is the second generation for the, some of the basic uh, some of the other uh, attributes of the second generation 700 are uh, ultra wideband frequency from 4.4 to 5.9 5, gigahertz uh, and it's adaptable in most of the regions since it covers the NATO band as well as the 5 gigahertz unlicensed spectrum it combines the uh, integrated and connectivity into one model, so which is really good for uh, tactical size antenna and external antenna if you want to use it. It includes both PTP and PMP capabilities. Uh, it increases capacity to about 450 Mbps and it supports 256 um, in all the channel sizes. The channel sizes varies from 5 megahertz all the way to 45 megahertz. It also supports IPv4, V6 uh, and it also has uh, 1588 timer as well as Sinky, which is really useful for uh, LTE. So this is a snapshot of our link planner. This is a really important tool. Uh, people, uh, a lot of our customers uh, deploy this to uh, deploy their network and kind of figure out how many links they need to capture uh, how many uh, remote stations that, or remote nodes that they want to do. So this is a typical snapshot of that. So in this picture, we can see a PTP 650 link being deployed. So you can select the band that you want to use, the product that you want to use, the maximum capacity, or if you want to go to for light, uh, what kind of regulations, uh, which country are you in, or what sort of bandwidth do you have available based on the spectrum analyzer, uh, and also what kind of payload do you want to do. You can also add interference uh, from either the uh, from, from either end of the, of the product. You can also adjust the height of the tower. Uh, and the and the map below is actually taken from Google Earth, so this kind of represents the landscape of the Earth as it is. Uh, so it also gives you a theoretical uh, or a actually pretty accurate mean uh, aggregate throughput given this kind of conditions, uh, given the distance and so this. For example, in this picture, we have a link of around 19 kilometers away uh, using a PTV 650, and the maximum or an aggregate throughput that you can expect is around 36 uh, Mbps, 65 Mbps. So this would be a, an actual deployment of our link planner tool. So you have uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, remote nodes connected to cell towers, connected to uh, backhaul links that are connected to each other. So this would be an accurate representation of link planner and how it would be used in our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, day -day activity as part of our customer base. So a lot of our customers de deploy, use Link Planner and deploy their networks accordingly and then we support, uh, we support them along the way and then we are also able to make bill of materials so that when you deploy a network in a particular region, you're, you, can, you can easily see how much uh, pro products you would need to buy and then it, uh, it also has a tool for you to generate the bill of material so that it's easier to order along with all the part numbers and all the other stuff. So enough of features uh, in the PTP 700 is spectrum uh, yeah, spectrum analyzer which is also interference mitigation. Uh, it is self-optimizing so basically what it does it scans all the channels from 44 gigahertz to all the way to 59 gigahertz and it identifies available channels in which you can use uh, for transmission safer and it just keeps that in it back of its mind in a sense because you can if you are the, the channel that you are in currently goes bad you can easily switch to uh, another channel in real time because you already have historical and real time analysis of the channel so uh, the PTP 700 supports line of sight 
near line of sight and non line of sight technology in that uh, uh, the way it's done is the way how it's done is based on multiple input multiple I, that's called mimo so we have a 2 by 2 mimo with uh, uh, dual packet load uh, based on the head charge and the v antenna uh, it also has ioftm is the intelligent orthogonal frequency division multiplexing which resists interference and channel fading uh, we also have uh, preemptive adaptive modulation uh, we also have dso as i talked about earlier it also has a high spectral efficiency of about uh, 40 450 mbps as maximum at 45 channel bandwidth uh, it and it's the best radio in class uh, with respect to system uh, highest system gain and link circuit in the category one of our key attributes which ex exceeds our uh, competitors is our proven reliability so the ptp platform has about 5 billion field hours of operation and uh, our ptp 700 is designed for uh, a goal of around 40 mtbs uh, whereas our other it is designed for that but our other products have already exceeded 377 years with more than 100,000 nodes already being deployed. So this is our team uh, headed by Rob Miller. Uh, they're really a strong team. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns uh, after the meet, after the webinar, please reach out to them. I'm going to leave this screen on so that you can kind of use that information or copy it down. And then please let me know if you have any questions uh, about this. Okay, thank you very much, Sagar. Uh, we uh, actually don't have any questions in the queue right now, um, but uh, what we'll do is uh, certainly post the recording of the presentation to the community, and uh, you will be able to post any questions and comments you have on that community thread, and uh, we'll be able to answer those for you. Well, thanks everybody for joining. We look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Have a good day.